hello everybody welcome back to peaks peak or should i say peaks peaks performance shop we are getting ready to put together some more tools i've got uh, some oil changes and things i need to do but uh, we needed a few things to help us with that well first of all white floors get dirty very easily so we needed a good mop bucket to mop so i picked that up but I also got us an um, oil change barrel to use under the lift. Well, it's more like a bucket, you know, with a tall funnel and whatnot. And I picked up a couple of under hoist jack stands, tall jack stands. Mainly because where I've never worked with a lift before, I thought maybe it would be smart for us to, at least in the beginning, have a jack stand for the front and the back of the vehicle. Once we let it down on the locks, we can put that in place just in case we're not really good at balancing the weight or anything like that. We'll have a little bit of added protection there to stabilize our vehicles. Um, may not use them all the time, I don't know. We'll see, see how that goes, but I, I wanted to get them just to make sure that we had them available. And like I said, so uh, to help us with the uh, learning curve of using the lift to begin with. So uh, we're going to unbox this stuff and get it all put together. We'll show you what we got and tell you what we think of it. Now, for a mop bucket, we just went with the Rubbermaid uh, bucket that's got the ringer built into it and a basic old wooden handle mop loop in mop that ought to help us keep the floors clean being that we have a lot of uh, dirt that we're gonna we're gonna track in and out from the farm um, we're definitely gonna put that to good use our five gallon oil drain dolly is in this box right here so we'll get that pulled out and put together and we went with Arbor Freight jack stands. These are Pittsburgh 4,000 pound capacity jack stands. They look to be pretty stinking heavy duty made. So, uh, and I think these will work just fine for what we're trying to do here. All right guys, now I've got a secret. You can't tell my wife, cause she's already been on me about trying to keep these floors in this garage cleaner than we keep the floors in the house. But, well, I went inside and put on my church boots because my feeding boots had mud on them and I wanted to mop the floors and not, you know, get mud on the floors. So, yeah, do the work with my church boots. It's about time to retire the old ones anyway, so these may have to get retired to work boots that I keep clean for the garage. And then I'll give me another pair of church boots. That's a good idea. This feels pretty professional. Rubbermaid mop bucket. This is pretty well an entry level mop bucket um, and it kind of shows. This was about 50 bucks at Lowe's. It doesn't have a handle on it anywhere. I mean, other than like a lip up under here to grab it, but there's no lip on the front. So when you pick it up, you gotta, you know, reach all the way down under it to pick it up. Uh, just completely pick up the bucket, which is a little bit of a pain. Um, but, you know, the thing rolls, rolls well, it's got good solid, um, nice casters on it. It rings out the mop just fine, so, you know, it's a mop bucket. It's gonna work just fine. But, yeah, man, for 50 bucks, I don't know, I think they'd put a handle on it. Anyway, 
excited to have it because it's going to help us keep the floor clean. Next, we've got the uh, five gallon oil drain dolly from Harbor Freight. This, uh, this little piece right here was about 60 bucks. Um, and you know, pretty necessary if we're gonna be doing oil changes on the lift. We didn't need a high capacity one. I mean, this will hold, you know, two or three oil changes or, well, one oil change from my diesel truck or, you know, a couple other cars. So, um, you know, it'll do the trick. And we normally take our oil and recycle it at advance and you can't take a big old barrel in there anyway. So this is a reasonable amount of oil that we could haul in there and, and uh, recycle. So that will work. Um, couple of things in putting this little thing together. It was, it was real simple to put together, but one thing that I noticed is I started to put the casters on before I put this ring on the bottom. But this ring is meant to sit right on that little lip on the bottom. And then you tighten your casters down and these actually kind of pinch in on the bottom of the can to hold it all together. And, and it fits together pretty snug, but if you try to put the casters on before you put the strap on the can, then they'll crush and they won't line up correctly on there and then you'll have to spread them back out. Ask me how I know. Um, but got that put together. The only other thing about the uh, assembly of this oil can that was an issue is the screw that they provided to put this plastic funnel on top of this pipe. It's a pre-drilled pipe and I lined it up with the hole, but the screw threads were so cheap that they just stripped off of the screw and wouldn't pull the screw into the pipe. So I threw it away and got my own screw and put in it and we're good to go. So that's that. Otherwise, I mean, this is again, kind of like the mop bucket. It's gonna serve its purpose and there's no real, uh, not much that can go wrong with it, I don't see. So um, excited to have it. jack stand. Um, everything is, is, is pretty heavy duty, pretty heavy made. It's a Pittsburgh brand. It adjusts from 49 and three quarters inches all the way up to 93 and a half inches. So that's like what? A whole bunch. That's pretty tall. That's like seven foot nine. So, um, and our lift will lift up to like six foot high. So, um, so yeah, this is gonna do everything we need it to do. We've actually got two of them, so I got another one to put together here. We're gonna knock that out, but yeah, pretty satisfied. Real quick, one thing that I about messed up is this bearing goes right down in there, and then you've got this slot that slides down in. And this adjustment has the shaft part on the bottom, the little chamfer pointed down so that it sets in that bearing. And now I'm even more impressed with it because look how smooth. Yeah, buddy. So I got to put the uh, plate back on the top of it. But yeah, about missed that.
guys, I can't stand it any longer. I want to lift the truck just to see how it does and check my clearances. I actually had somebody ask the question about this particular truck and how much walk space you got under it when it hits the stops. Um, and I've been wanting to know that anyway, so I decided to just bring it in here and raise it up just to see. So I am trying to figure out the best lift points. Um, I did a little bit of uh, Googling because I couldn't find anything specific telling me exactly the best point to get the balance right on this. So I've got a decent starting point here, I think. Um, I'll show you what I decided, but basically I lined up the, the driver's seat position with the posts and I used the uh, center line of my concrete, which is the seam between the two pads that we poured, I lined it up with the center of my truck. I've got the hitch in the back and that, so I know I'm centered in between the posts. <laughs> Uh, and all our arms touched at the same time. Those arms are straight up and down. They're not tilted or wobbling any direction. All right, we got her on the locks. Good flat lifting point there. Got my four ton jack stands under each axle, just for peace of mind. That's, that's what I got them for is peace of mind. But you know, I don't know with this fisheye lens, I mean, it may distort things. I don't know if you can see just how solid and sturdy and straight everything appears to be, but it really does. Everything, everything looks great. I'm getting more and more confident with this whole lift setup. Um, you know, I want to get used to, uh, where the mounting points are or the, the lift points are for every vehicle and what kind of adapters to use and all that. That's part of figuring it out. So we, I spent some time before I lifted this truck testing things out and figuring out my, my weight distribution and my, um, what I can safely lift on and how much of a, uh, of block supports I can put under it and then trying to get everything good and straight underneath the frame. So that's it. I hope you enjoyed me sharing my new tools with you, my jack stands, my oil drain bucket, um, and my mop bucket, which I'm gonna get to use as soon as I get my dirty truck out of here because I got my floors dirty. I think that's gonna be a recurring theme around here, but I do love the white floors for the light. You know, it gets pretty dark back in under here and we'll probably do some things to get some more light here. But with the white floors, you get some light reflection up under there, which makes it to where you can, you can see a little bit just even without lights. You've got decent lighting up under here, way better than laying on the ground under a vehicle even with outside lighting or whatever so yeah got a cool setup here man i'm super excited about it i appreciate y'all watching hope y'all enjoyed the video we'll see y'all next time have a good day